What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of The Breakdown, the show where we break down, and with heavy spoilers, some of our favorite horror TV shows and movies. I'm your How host, heavy are these spoilers? Huh? How heavy are the spoilers? Oh, man. I mean, we dive deep into these shows. You know how it'd be. Deep. We go deep in. But I'm who your... are you? Who are you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm your host, Great Anthony. intro. Hey, uh, I'm your boy, Sam. Your boy, Sam. Um, We're back. I'm the for... color con. We back. We back for episode uh, episode three and two. Four. Two the episode two is a breakdown. Breaking down episode three and four of Lovecraft Country. Yes, the HBO uh, popular series HBO Ma- HBO Max HBO. It's on mm-hmm. both platforms. Uh, so if you don't have HBO, you know HBO Max is a simple alternative for subscribing. And if you already have it on your cable, there you go. Watch it on HBO. Um, yeah. Very fun show thus far. Episodes three and four furthers plots more and more, and we're getting more characters returning, uh, more surprises as we go. And yeah, episode three was taking us diving deep into the the world of the paranormal. Episode four was taking us a a, a, a dive deep into the world of something like Indiana Jones, man. <laughs> you know, so uh, it, it's been good though. I mean, I think I don't know how they're working out. I think if you have HBO Max, you can watch it two days early. Uh, at least they did that with episode four and three. Episodes. Yeah, but I think that was only because of the Labor Day weekend. Right. Because uh, I did check today, and it's not up. It's yeah. not up. So it might have just been one time Labor Day weekend only. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, man, let's just dive deep into episode three, man. So we pick up, you know, right after the events of episode two, man, we saw the whole mansion blow up. And this is a, a post-mortem kind of, Thing where everybody's trying to cope with everything and, and try to yeah. move on from that. Yeah, when I first began to watch this episode, I was really confused. I was like, is this a prequel or is this following the storyline? Because it kind of just felt a little out of place in the beginning until you figured out what was going on. Right, yeah. At least that's how I felt. Yeah, no, I, I had thought that maybe this was going to be an anthology series. Um, where maybe every other episode, because like it, yeah, it, it felt weird in the beginning. Like you're like, okay, these are obviously the same characters, but what's going on here? Are we telling different stories now? With well, you know, is it? Yeah, well, especially because uh, the main uh, actress, what is her name? Uh, uh, Letty or Liddy? Yeah, well, yeah. She's like she didn't have money in episode one. She didn't have money in episode two, and she's buying a house in episode three. And I'm like. How? I mean, right. obviously we get the answer. We get the answer. And I'll on. just, right, 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 pretty quickly that it was, oh, well, toward, I think the end of the episode is when we get that answer of. Uh, it, uh, it's about midway. Yeah, that the house was bought by um, the, the oh. white lady. Well, okay, we get one, we get one answer in the beginning where it was like an inheritance yes. of some sort. And then you find out the official, actually, yeah, the official answer at the end of the show. Um, yeah. We really bought it. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, this episode was really, like I said, explored deep into the paranormal horror world of of Lovecraft Country. I mean, obviously, if you know the premise of the show and you watch the trailers, this is like a sci-fi horror TV show with, you know, you have the kind of master of today's modern sci-fi, J.J. Abrams producing, and, and the new kind of master of horror, uh, you know, Jordan Peele, also at the producer's chair. So, you know, you have the two great minds in today's world of cinema of both the sci-fi world and the horror world that when you saw this coming together, you knew kind of something was up. So this episode really touches on that. So a, br- a brief backstory. So the house that she buys really is, uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about this later because there's more plots, but the house that she buys essentially was owned by this guy who would experiment on, on different people with body parts and stuff. And you see that later on in the show, but essentially she buys this house and, uh, you know, she obviously is, Letty is just happy to have her own place. She tells her sister to come move in with her and everything. And, you know, you, you start seeing and hearing about stories about, you know, stuff that's happened in that house. And, you know, that house is, has its has its skeletons in its closet, quite literally, honestly. Um, and I, I think it's it's such a, it was such a good tale to tell. I mean, you know, when they move in, obviously they're all happy, but of course the neighborhood they moved in to uh, was filled with uh, a bunch of white folk that just don't approve of that. Yeah, and that's definitely a huge thing 
uh, is that they don't do, they do not approve of um, the people moving in. And, and it doesn't help that Letty is not just letting anyone move into that home. She's very specific to struggling African-American black individuals um, that she's trying to help get up on their feet because she was blessed with this inheritance. And so she wants to give back, you know, she's giving her sister a room free of charge. You know, she's renting these rooms at you know lower rates so that they can just, you know, they're barely making their mortgage payment, you know, um, and things like that. She's not looking to try to make money off it. She's really just trying to be like, Hey, like I have this home. It has free rooms. You need a place to stay. Let me help you type deal. And obviously one, the big issue is they don't like that. Cause a lot of these people tend to be a little bit, uh, on the, the, the racist side, to be honest. Um, and they're like, um, one, I don't like that you're moving in here. Two, I don't like that you're having other African-Americans and Blacks move in here. Like, how did you get this place? And we're going to make your life a living hell, whatever that may look like. Yeah. Um, and so I in mean, the beginning and, of the episode, you get to, yeah. you really see it like they're giving her trouble for living there. Um, and she's putting a lot of the blame on the neighbors but she's not realizing what's actually going on is there's a paranormal entities kind of also in control of the house. Well, and it, it's really cool. You know, it's, it, you know, you bring that up and I think there was, um, you know, watching the end, end of the episode, I think, you know, in the beginning you think it's just a haunting going on, but in reality, when you really look at it, it was more to it than that. There was, uh, a, a guy who used the guy who used to there he was he was a racist too and he would experiment on 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 black folk as well to change their bodies and and put different body parts on them. It, I mean, at one point you saw like a baby's head on a jock like body, yeah, which was yeah. creepy, you know. And um, so I I honestly think and here's here's my theory going around this was that all the ghosts that who were tortured in that house it was kind of like their cry for help. This was their cry to get the attention to try to get the evil soul out of there so they can be at rest. Well, I think it was, it could have been that. And I, I think that's a really good theory. My theory was it's, hey, this, there's a dark entity controlling this house, not necessarily in terms of like skin color, but like dark entity in terms of like an evil spirit um, in control of this house, meaning the, the, the doctor that lives there. Um, and you need to go. And I think that's what a lot of the reasoning. The rationale behind it was was at least was like hey we weren't lucky enough to make it out of here but you need to right uh, but like they're not warning. taking that it was a warning yeah at least that's how i felt it but obviously i don't think letty and the rest of the gang took it that way they were kind of like they did their research they realized they started putting the pieces together and they were like mm, this isn't okay what's going on here i think one of the most frightening parts of the episode to me at least was when the kids were playing with the Ouija board. I was shouting at my TV, don't do it. Don't you do it. Especially when you watch a movie like The Exorcist where that's exactly how stuff broke down. You know, Reagan playing with the Ouija board and bad shit happening to her. And literally as they start playing with that Ouija board, it starts getting worse and worse from there. You know, it was already bad when they moved in because they already suspect things and you saw things, you know, um, like shadows or something, or you know, she starts discovering rooms and why is this room, you know, you know, locked or why is this room different, you know, or something. So you start discovering a lot of the dark past of the house, um, and as it goes on, it just kind of gets worse for for everyone. You know, not only are they dealing with the front of yo, there's something up with this house, but they're dealing with the front of their neighbors don't want them there and like you said they're causing chaos like one point i think when they throw a party you know they all look at that and they go this is bad they actually burn a cross in their front in their front lawn obviously anyone knows uh, you know majority of the time that's usually a kkk symbol um and so they they do that and that really ticks letty off because not only that but they also did something else that was a scumbag move which was tape a brick to the horn you remember that yeah, they did that really early on, uh, was taking the bricks to the horn. Um, and so that was the final straw. It's like this house is not giving me peace. My neighbors aren't giving me peace. I'm just trying to enjoy this new home that I got and have a housewarming party. And these people are just giving me hell. Um, and so everyone basically snaps at that point. They're just like, this is too much. This is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, and I think it was for good reason because – 
as we learn when Letty actually gets arrested and she's in that cop car, you realize that the cops are not on her side. Um, and as we find out now in episode four, um, you know, kind of leading into there a little bit, but we can, we're still not done with episode three, but you realize that the cops are kind of in on the bigger overarching story that's been going on since episode one with this whole magic knights thing or whatever they're called. I don't know what the hell they're called. Right, yeah, right they're now. like an order of some sort. Yeah, it's um, like an order legion thing. And that's something um, we're going to touch back on. on. That's something we're going to touch yeah. back on too because – there is a, a big plot point related to the house of the police chief and everything. I mean, he actually you find out like, and we'll talk more about it in depth, but you find out that his, I think his ancestors used to own that house or something like that. So he's trying to, well, no, I think he house. was, I think he knew the doctor based upon what I remember. And he would be the one to be able to get people to go missing because um, they start, I think they piece it together on who the spirits are in the home in episode three. And they realize all of these people went missing and ended up like they were from like the south side and ended up on the north side, which is the nice side. Um, and that's where they met, like they get to the north side and get went missing. Um, and so I think that's really how they piece together who the spirits are. Um, cause they realized there was like nine people missing and they all began to be like kind of linked to the doctor cause he was doing research on these people yeah and and so you see you're seeing this past uncover i think one of the coolest scenes in the in the in the um in the show too in this episode was uh when she start you know she starts developing all her pictures in that room and she starts making yeah. out the face and then she puts them all together and the face actually comes at her and tells her to get out of yeah. the house that was such a bitching scene i really liked how they accomplished that that was really cool um on top of all the things that are going on at the house, though, we start getting more uh, relationship kind of pushes in this episode, too, with Atticus and, yeah. and Letty. Yeah, Atticus and Letty, they're kind of – they're realizing um, there may be a little bit of chemistry going on there. Uh, and obviously, they decide to pursue that um, um, because obviously, like, they have feelings for each other, but then they finally are just both like, Let, let's go, and obviously – they end up having uh, intercourse with one another. Um, I think the other, the other, there's other two interesting relationships too that are really developing with Atticus. You're seeing Atticus and his dad. You're able to see the turmoil there and the kind of distrust for one another, which we're going to see more of in episode four. Um, and um, Uncle was it Uncle George with his wife uh, Hippolyta? I believe what's her name. Yeah, Hippolyta. Uh, she knows something's not right. She keeps questioning things because in the beginning of episode three, Atticus is staying there at the house and he's overstayed his welcome, basically. Um, and so he's kind of like, he's trying to go to school with his dad, but that doesn't work. So that's why he ends up at Letty's. Um, but Hippolyte is like, I know you are not telling me something. Um, and I want you to tell me, but no one wants to budge. So, yeah, it's it's something that when it came toward, you know, going towards that 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 relationship, I mean, we also learned that, you know, Letty, as much as a beautiful woman she is, you find out when they had intercourse, that was her first time, which was a big kind of thing that they Wait, were... Wait, really? Yeah, that was something that she said in the... In the was that episode three or episode... Four? I thought it was in the bar of episode three. When she, I don't remember that. Yeah, she. I mean, I, I trust you, but I don't remember that. Yeah, she, she. He sits with her, and they're talking about it, and he goes, uh, "She says something like it was that was my first time," and he kind of is in shock. He's like, "I'm so sorry that it happened that way. You know, it, I, I didn't intend for that to, you know, be like that for you." So it, it that was a big relationship thing too, because obviously. She loves him and trusts him enough for you know him to do you know have intercourse with him and and for her I guess she was kind of saving it for you know her first time, uh, and w that's what I think advances and, and starts growing their relationship. But I, I thought she had sex with Tree or whatever his name is the other the other guy the jock looking guy. Yeah, the guy he's a, he's in episode four as well. Yeah, I, he I, goes on the trip with them. I know she makes a a, a comment about like. He talks about his his, uh, his penis at one point, and it's like that was so funny. Yeah, and he he talks about it, and he he's like saying 
you know, like something like that. And she goes, oh, yeah. yeah. But I think here's what I think. Uh, she like told him, you know, yeah, you know, I, you know, you, like supposedly I've seen it or something. But she sounded sarcastic. So I think there was rumors being started about her. And school, maybe, of her yeah. being maybe a slut or something, or you know, like being promiscuous. Yeah. So, I think when that was said and done, of you know, of having all this said and done and shit. So I think that there's, I think there's always been misinterpreted rumors about her, and that she, I mean, from what we know, she was in the science fiction book club. She was in, you know, she was kind of an outcast in high school. She had trouble yeah. growing up and stuff so we know yes she is this beautiful girl but she has a geek side to her too and usually you know in day in day and age it's it's like it's really cool to be a geek obviously but uh i, I don't know back then if they took it well you know they would always get picked on more and, and everything from what you see in movies and stuff so it it definitely is something going forward just looking at their relationship obviously they are interested in, in each other and there's even one point where she's dancing with the guy and he's kind of looking on to it, you know, and looks like he's yeah, he's kind of like, he's yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, so, get away from my woman. Yeah. So they're, but they're, they're, yeah. obviously they worked that out. Yeah. Um, I also really enjoyed the ending of episode three. I thought the ending of episode three was really well paced and, right. um, was, was comedic. But also kind of pointed to the darkness of it. Yeah. Like, you know, that they brought the, the spirit lady. <laughs> with the blood yeah dude that that kind of gave <laughs> that me hilarious. that was that was that was cool because it kind of gave me i don't know about you but it gave me some american horror story vibes like this episode definitely definitely american horror story vibes um kind of played into like the voodoo like witchcraft that um, right. is very much um dominant you know i wouldn't say dominant but like you know known to be within like the african-american black culture right um especially like in the south um, you know, kind of reminded me Coven esque. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you wanted, to, if you wanted to talk about American Horror Story, um, I thought they had some really funny scenes, um, as well as you know, you really, really. That's when you hit those that big paranormal show off, right? Um, showing out there, you know, where you get all of the spirits, and then they're fighting the the real evil spirit in there. Yeah. And there's a couple tense moments where well, I don't know if they're gonna make it out of here. Yeah, and they. Leading up to that point, though, everyone thought Letty was was crazy. Like, yeah. she was the only one really hearing shit, and everybody thought she was crazy. And, like, even Atticus at one point kind of thought she was crazy. But, like, even Letty had to remind him, like, we've been through a lot of shit. They both remind each other, like, we've been through a lot of shit, and we've seen a lot of shit. That could be what's yeah. taking a toll on you. And she goes, I know what I'm seeing. I'm not crazy. Like, yeah, I know what I'm hearing. Oh, shit, that scared the hell out of me. There was a firework that went off. <laughs> We're talking <laughs> about scary shit, and fucking firework goes off. That's a clip. Um no, but there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff that's that's happening where it was like everyone was thinking she was crazy and nuts, and that wasn't the case at all. Because um, Atticus finally sees it yeah. himself and is like, okay, there's something we have to do about this, and that's when they go and get the the voodoo witch doctor. Uh, you know, prior to that, they do a ton of research on the house and and what's been going on. Um, I have to say that one of my favorite scenes in this uh, scene was seeing Letty just get fed up and get mad and fight back towards the the racist neighbors. <laughs> yeah, like oh well, yeah, that was really funny. Yeah, that well, that was it was a cool stand of things, you know. That pretty much just shows yeah. they're tired of this shit, you know. They just want to yeah. live in peace, and they're not bothering you. Why are you bothering them? Kind of thing, you know. It's like, uh, yeah. you know, she was badass coming out with the bat and destroying all the cars, and then the fucking. The men had shotguns ready to go in case someone tried to fuck with her. And like, it, was like a, yeah. it was like a whole army kind of thing. But then it was cool when the cops were coming. They like threw all their weapons in a trunk and then the car, one of the other car took off. They got rid of the evidence while they got arrested and stuff. So I thought that was a really cool kind of like redemption scene for all of them. Like yeah. they've been getting fucked with all this time and this was something that they needed to fucking get out of it. Oh, and I also loved. So. She's trying to get this get out this episode wrapped up here before we get to the fourth one. Right. Is um when the, the racist neighbors come back into the house, they're in the middle of doing this whole what is that seance basically. Right. Uh, um, you know, trying to get rid of the spirits. And the racist people come and the spirits are like, Well, you can deal with evil guy, we'll deal with these guys. Yeah. And they start giving them hell, which was Hilarious. Oh yeah, they killed them off all one by one. It was, and then you know, I think the coolest one 
<laughs> too was uh, the elevator one where he pe peeks his head and you know we did remember the elevator fell down, but then it coming back up was hilarious to me. Like, I was like okay, yeah. that just happened. But yeah, no, that seance scene was just nuts, dude. Like, eventually, yeah. like everyone gets knocked out. People got possessed. Like the the, the actual uh, voodoo witch doctor, she got possessed at one point, and then Atticus got possessed. Just get possessed. That, that was scary because that was big. Well, yeah, and it's like you know the way Letty sees it is like this is someone that she's starting to started to start a relationship with, and she's already seen this happening to him. So it's it was probably hard on her, but then. What was really cool was when she called upon all the spirits that had been tortured, and they all formed a circle to get rid of the demon, which was cool. Yeah, yeah that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing we didn't touch about is is the elevator before we go into episode four, I guess. Because yeah, the elevator is a big uh, thing. Big thing. It's broken. Yeah. The character fix it. And then it just basically has a mind of its own at that point. Right. And apparently can go... Wherever the hell it wants. Like <laughs> I don't know. Well, that kind of ties... It cut... It cut that's what kind of confused me about all this was like, okay, this elevator's in this house and that looked like it took them down to the caves, exactly where they go to in episode four, which we'll talk more about. But my question was like, I know they go back in that. Does that elevator go back to the house or is it like a, like a portal? Like, what is it? Does it just go anywhere? Like I'm I'm confused. I don't about know. That. They didn't really do it. I they didn't much know. explain on that on either episode. You know, you just kind of saw this. You saw the symbols, and you're like, "Oh fuck!" There, here we go again. And you saw all these bodies, so you're assuming those are all the bodies of like the people from the past and shit. Yeah, I thought I thought the bodies that we saw were at the end of episode three were the bodies of all of the spirits that helped right. fight at the end. Right. Yeah. Um, and I just thought there was like you know, some magical way to get below the basement basement. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, that was... um, that's what I had. That's, that's what I figured it was at the end of episode three. That was, cool. and then episode four just is like, you have this idea. Well, let me throw that idea on the floor and let me just make it a different idea. Right. Episode three though. Uh, the final ending was a, a big shock of a, of a character. Oh yeah. We forgot about that. Yeah. Character coming back. Uh, you, who we thought never really confirmed that it was, that she was dead or anything. But you figure with all the house, everything that happened in the house, that she was dead, and that was um, I don't remember. I knew name. she wasn't dead. Christina had, Braith, yeah, Braithwaite. Yeah, Braithwaite. Yeah, I knew she wasn't dead because I knew that anyone that was part of the ritual was dead. Was dead. Yeah. Or at least I think he's dead. Yeah. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna say that I know that they're dead, but I'm pretty We're sure. Go off assumption. <laughs> yeah, because that was a pretty wild ending in episode two. Right. Um. So I'm gonna assume most of those people are dead, um, but I, I knew the I knew the rest of the uh, people were fine. I knew Christina was fine, and I knew that her like lover boy was fine too. Right. Um, but it was an, it was a shock when she came back. You know, she was running like a realtor company. I guess that's kind of her front or something. And she's closing it down and everything. And then you know Atticus confronts her like this was you all along. Like you gave her the money, you bought her the house. What do you want with this house? And you find out. That elevator actually does have the meaning to it where they think that elevator can take them to the lost pages of this uh, ritual book that they've been going after for so many so many years. No, 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 no. It's not the elevator. There's a um, a galaxy, like, or a, I guess it's basically like a galaxy or solar system thing that is, like, tied to... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The magic people, whatever the fudge they're called. Um, and she wants it, and she knows it's in the house, but she can't go in there, I think, or something. Well, yeah, I remember when she tried walking up, and I think well, I that's because there was some blood on the walls. Yeah, but that was that was hilarious. But yeah, yeah she uh, basically is trying to go after. That's why she bought the house and kind of gave her that tip of all that, so she can get her way in through it through them. So yeah, going if no one else has the house, at least she can control the people that do. Right. Going into episode four. I mean, that's how episode three ends. He pulls a gun on her and tries to kill her and going into episode four, we're started confronted. We, we see her again. She goes to confront well, you, I love how strong we, I just want to touch on this. I love how strong she was. She's like, you have a gun to me. Shoot me. Right. Shoot me. And he's like, I can't. He's like, that's right. I thought she was like control with, with magic, though. No, that's why. But yeah. she was basically like, you have the gun to me. Try. And she's like, I can't pull the trigger. Right. No matter what I did. Right. That was, that was, was hilarious. Cool. Yeah. And so going into episode four now, you know, the first thing we see is is we touch up back on her and she goes and tries to confront Letty about, you know, that going into the house and stuff. And, you know, she sees the blood and the blood's on the fucking door and shit. And 
she can't get in and they're like she's kind of laughing at her face and she shuts the door on her and i thought it was just a funny moment yeah. overall like it was kind of like a, a fuck you to the to her you know after all the shit they put yeah. through yeah and uh this was a good episode because this episode now they they have to find these lost pages to the book i think they, yeah. they made a, a some sort of a deal um I forget what the deal was, but they made a deal like they go get the pages and they. No, there was no deal. I don't think there was a deal made. I think it was she basically let them know that hey, this guy is part of the society, right? Uh, and it was one of the, like one of the chapter heads or whatever, um, and um, you know the thing that was missing is a few pages of Adam, which is right. or the language of Adam or whatever it is. Uh, and you know, with those comes more power, basically. Right. And Titus had a certain set of pages, I guess. I think it was Titus Brace, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he hid them, and they don't know where they are. And so, basically, Atticus and the rest of the gang were like, "If we can find those pages, then maybe we'll have an upper hand, and we'll be able to do some form of magic as well, so that." She's no so Christina's no longer basically controlling them, right? Because she let him in on what was going on, basically. And Atticus was like, Well, if we go find these before someone else does, maybe we can have some form of leverage, yeah. Because basically, that's how I remember it. This this takes him on a giant ass journey, um, to this museum, and obviously, yeah. we get we get re uh, re uh introduced back to Hippolyta where she. Again, is asking tons of questions about things, but people are not giving her a straight answer. We also find out that Dad's a, a big drunk in this one as well, because um, in the early ep- beginning of the episode, like he's just all drunk and stuff, and he's got booze everywhere, and and that's when he burns the book. Yeah, that's when he brings um, the book and everything. Yeah, because Uncle George had asked him basically to destroy it. The uh, whatever the name, I forget the name of the book, but right. It basically has all the rules and stuff about the society. Yeah, and it was it was just cool to see this all. You know, I mean, I know for you this was a, a little bit of a slower episode than than most that we've gotten in the first three. Um, and for me, I just I was just looking more at how this is going to further the plot, and I'm pretty sure you were on the same page. Um, yeah, no, I definitely I definitely had some moments that obviously helped further the plot. But I just felt like episode one was so action packed. Episode two was so action packed. Episode three was so action packed. Where episode four kind of had moments where I was like, okay, look, I get that. Like, you need to fill in some of the holes now and use that episode to do this. Right. But I was just like, man, I want more. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, like, once they get to the museum and start on their journey, it starts getting fast paced again. But like, I just felt like there was kind of moments where I was kind of like, okay, like, I get the purpose of this, but I'm like, yeah. Like okay. Um. So yeah, they go on a big road trip, and and Hippolyta still is just trying to get answers and stuff. Um. And they're all kind of dodging her every way they can, giving her the same yeah. answer they've been all told to give her and everything. And so they 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 arrive at this museum where they have to they 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 know where this the pages are, and they and they kind of convince the security guard to take them in a place where they're not really allowed to be at right now. Um. It's kind of like blocked off or something. You know. It, it's like. Well, well, the, the thing was is they go to Titus Brace, right? Um, donated a, donated money for a part of a wing, right? right. And donated because he was an adventurer or like some form of explorer, right. and he had brought stuff back from a couple of his journeys and donated a wing basically to this museum. Um, and so they make a connection with the security guard, and they say, "Hey, come back later tonight, and I'll let you in." But here, go. This is where. They go basically where they want to go get details. They're like, this is his part of the museum. So if we're going to get any details about what's going on, it's going to be here. Right. So it's really cool to, you know, it was cool to see all this go through. They had to, like, channel their inner Indiana Jones, if I if I may say. It. Like, because they had to solve a bunch of riddles, solve a bunch of puzzles to get certain places. Yeah. You know, there was parts where they had to, like, drop down in underground and there was water that was involved where like they had to beat they had to beat a certain they had to get to a certain area before sundown because if sundown happens and the whole place floods with water as like a precautionary and 
it takes them on a journey, man. I remember even one point watching the part where they have to cross that like bridge that's like in a oh, uh, that was just, intense. Yeah, just like the fact that that was happening, they were putting in that code, and the bridge was collapsing closer and closer, and they barely make it in. Like that was nuts, man. And I thought that was a funny part where the dad tosses his bag and he goes, he drops it, and he goes, "If I jump, you better not drop me." And it was like just kind of one of those moments where it was funny, but um, yeah. this episode actually gave us more relationship between Atticus and his dad too. Um, yeah. With a twist at the end, but we'll get to that soon. But um, yeah, it, it gave us more of a, a relationship between them. They bonded a little bit more and kind of furthered their communication since we last saw them in like the second episode. Yeah, I mean, because we see them in episode three and they're kind of like wishy washy. Like, right. You see the dad drunk then, and Atticus is kind of like, I don't trust you, basically. Uh, but in episode four, they really have to coexist. To be able to complete the adventure, right? And we also learned that Atticus's dad knows a lot because right. um, that's when we see him burn the book at Uncle George's request. Um, but he needs to use all of those things he learned in the book to be able to get through it. Like that one part when they are crossing the bridge, and that bridge is basically dissolving right behind them. Right. They have to be able to like God, human, <laughs> animal, like whatever it was. I forget the entire riddle, but like have to go through all of those different things right um to do that and have to know basically about the like a lot of the society in the order yeah so it's pretty interesting yeah and it was interesting to see them go through the caves and then we find we get caught up with the elevator again uh they, they yes. discover it, it almost to me was like a video game where like they open the elevator first like okay this is going to be our exit plan let's open this and get this ready because we got to go forward the water's going to be coming up. We have to have this ready as fast as possible when we come out because yeah. shit's going to pop off. And it was cool to go see them because, uh, you know, they figured out – I guess so many people have tried to get into this this room, um, but certain people that have, like, the blood and everything can get in. And, you know, when they first see the door, there's already a, a decomposed hand right there that they have to take out. So Atticus puts on his ring and puts the hand – his arm in, and it hurts him at first, but then – it's only taking a little bit of blood to make sure he was rightfully a person yeah. that can oh. access that. Yeah. Um, and we see that happen, and then they go up into this room, which honestly looks like a part of a ship of some por- some sort. Yeah, that was the part that was really interesting, was like, are they underwater? And it's yeah. like a cave underwater? Or it kind of gave me like a kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean type right. vibe. That's what it basically gave me. The, the, then that's kind of interesting yeah we get introduced to this woman who we think is dead and then just reanimates out of nowhere but she's pretty much cursed to just watch the pages and give info that she's allowed to only give him i think she's only allowed to talk to the the what was his name titus well yeah but she basically made a deal with him like because she could read the language or whatever and translate it right um um uh, and she had asked to be with her ancestors and he basically said, okay, I'll keep, I'll keep with your ancestors, but I'm just going to bring you over here, put all your ancestors here, and right. um, everyone's going to be dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, which was wild. Yeah, they bring her back, which she's actually kind of talked about as she's both man and woman. Well, at least, yeah, we see that. <laughs> yeah, no, like, but like that, I thought that was an interesting thing. Like, she, they actually really touch on like her history and everything of there was actually yeah. people in, you know, that you know when evolution and everything was going on that actual people started forming like this like this is how they were born yeah. and everything you know so that was an interesting thing to to talk about uh to see that go down to see something new on the playing field of of this show because this show obviously we see a lot of themes based around times that are going on right now so it was cool to see that they're including everyone which i think is awesome um, yeah so we see her she's pretty much telling her like i i can't really do anything for you like I'm sorry. And so basically the water gets all crazy and it breaks through the ship. So they grab the pages, they grab her and they get out of there. They go for a nice little swim all the way to the elevator. And then they almost lose the pages and they're holding the elevator back, like to, to keep it going. So Letty can go get the pages. She goes and grabs the pages real quick and they take the elevator and they get back home. Um, and this is where it starts taking a, a very interesting turn. Cause you know, they have her all settled down. Everything's good. Like she's got her own room. Obviously, though, they find out since she left that cave, she can't talk like a regular person. Like, if she opens her mouth, like, it fucking's like a very high-pitched noise that can potentially kill you if she keeps talking. 
And so they find out that the curse w- uh, doesn't let her talk outside of that boat due to the fact that she can translate those pages. She, he didn't want to take the risk of her, her getting out and translating those pages for someone else. Well, yeah, and she can only talk to Atticus based upon what I remember. Right. Because Atticus well, has to speak with her. In, yeah, and he has to speak back to her in the tongue. Right. So that was uh, very interesting. That was more information to learn going forward. It's another thing to really think about going forward is like, are we going to come upon more things where he's got to talk to people in that kind of language since he knows it? And he just like, for him, he's, they asked him like, how do you know what she's saying? He goes, I don't know. Like he just knew, you know? And I thought that was really interesting. So they got it all settled down and everything's good. And the dad's pretty much saying like, I'm proud of you, son. You really stepped up today. And you know, you did good. You were brave and all this. And you, you know, you're thinking like, Hey man, their relationship's getting better. That's good. Went out of the blue (laughs) towards the end of the show. The dad goes into the room and, and slits the girl's throat. Yeah. Ending the episode right there. Leaving for questions. What's who is the dad really, and who's he working with? Is he doing this to protect his son? Is he doing this to please someone higher up? What's going on here? Yeah, um, a couple things that I want to make sure we also touch on is uh, the cops are working under one of these guys who's pretty high up. Right. Um, you know, he was the one that was helping the doctor. The doctor was high up in the society. Um, and so they both have pretty big roles in what happens. Um, what about that scene, too, different... when, when the, the, you just heard someone in his closet and you just they never showed that? Like, that was weird. Yeah, it was weird, too, yeah. Um, they all have different, like, chapters. So Tom, Titus Braithwaite has one. This other guy has his own, like, little chapter. Right. Um, like, all under the same order, but, like... Um, um, cause she gets in trouble, Christina, for being on his ground, basically. It was right. like, I don't come to your area. You don't come to my area, basically. Right. Um, without, you know, without the blessing. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting. But it's, it's cool um, to see Christina. She's becoming quite the badass. Yeah. She's definitely, I, I'm definitely like secretly rooting for her. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, I want her to be doing good things. I don't want her doing bad. Being corrupt. Like I definitely anything. think. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that she's like upset because she, being a woman, is not allowed to have the role that she thinks she deserves. And so I'm like, go get it, girl. But then I'm also at the same time like, don't screw over Letty and Atticus because they're good people too. Um, but one other thing we didn't mention is the sister is being seduced by the other Brace White, whose name I forget. Yeah, the like the butler guy. Yeah, she he basically told her I can give you everything you want. And that's and she's like I I been told that a million times and he goes i can actually keep my promise so it's looking like they're trying to bring the sister involved into this now yeah. and and one other thing hippole is going somewhere yeah she got the map so she she's going home she saw the atlas in the in in um george's car and she was like let me see that thing and she figured something out that maybe tying into his death and she goes nah screw this so she busts a yui on her way home and she's like we're going to this location we're gonna figure we're gonna pretty much gonna figure some shit out so yeah there's a lot of plots that are being set into stone going into episode five because now we're gonna see you know a bunch of different stories okay now we're gonna see what's going on with uh montrose the dad like who is he working for you know uh, Letty and um, Atticus obviously have their issues with not only their relationship, but everything they went through in episode four. What's going to be their story going forward? Okay. Hippolyta wants to find answers about what really happened to her husband, and she finally she has her first clue, so she's going to go investigate. And the sister now is getting seduced by the family, so what's going to be her role going forward into all this? Obviously, um, I know you don't see the teasers, but like in the teasers, we see her as like a butler and shit like that. You know, and it kind of mm-hmm. was weird at first, but I'm trying to see what her role is going to be in all this. It looks like next episode is really going to focus on her a lot. So, yo, what is it? So you're you're predicting episode five, we're going to see her at the mansion or at the estate doing butler work. Is that what you're saying? Like, kind of she was like dressed maid? like they're having parties and she's dressed, handing out drinks and shit like that. So I wonder if this uh, is. I wonder if they're telling her like you have to do this if you want all this success and shit like that. You know, they're trying to maybe no. just get in her head. So. We're going to get a lot of answers with her in episode five. So that's going to be good. And yeah. I, and What's episode five called, if you don't mind pulling it up? Uh, let me check. 
Let me see what the episodes are. Uh, what was the first one? Sundown? I don't. Some I don't know. Holy Ghost was three. Yeah. A History of Violence was four. I think it's oh, it's called it's called Strange Case. Ooh. So this is the Strange. this is the very synops the little uh, summary of it. After making a devil's bargain with William Ruby steps into the charmed shoes of a white woman, but her transformation only fortifies her resentment uh, of the racial divide. A betrayal by Montrose unleashes Atticus's pent-up rage, leaving Letty deeply disturbed and sending Montrose into the comforting arms of his secret lover. This is gay, I think. You think so? Uh, I think so. Or is, he, um, or is he hiding something that we just don't know? What if his secret lover uh, is Christina? Ooh, that's a that's a that's a possibility. I'm gonna tell you why my my thought is gay. Uh, because remember in episode one when they go to the bar, they go when Titus or when Articus goes out back. Yeah, there's a guy who's having um, you know pleasuring one another. Yeah. Uh, so there's that that happens in episode four. Trey was like I because he was at the bar. I believe he's the bartender. Right. Was basically like. I sent you out there on purpose because I wanted you to know what was going on. Right. Um, and so my thought is Montrose is part of some of that. Interesting. Um, Only time can tell. But, but I love the idea of him being with Christina because that would also be really fun. It'd be really interesting, you know? I mean, something higher up's going on here. So, But we have to wait till as of this recording tomorrow. But Yeah. Um, and find out. But... Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed our breakdown of episodes three and four of uh, Lovecraft Country. If you guys have any theories or any thoughts or anything about the show, leave them down in the comments. We'd love to hear them uh, to kind of keep our minds open about different things and on different characters and stuff. So or plot holes or whatever. So we'd love to hear that. If you guys enjoyed the breakdown, leave a like and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. Uh, check out the merch shop links in the description below, as well as our social media pages, Instagram and Twitter, check those out. Um, and of course, like always, I'm your boy, Anthony. That's your boy, Sam. We outie. We'll see. Peace.